First off, a bit of theory. Since Unreal Engine is a game engine, it has three types of light sources. Static type, when lighting and shadows are baked into surfaces. Static type demands the least resources out of all types. With movable type, lighting and shadows will change in real time if the light sources are rotated or moved. Movable type requires more GPU resources compared to static type. And stationary, the most draining type for a GPU. This type is static and movable at the same time. This means that dynamic real-time lighting will work on top of baked lighting. And there are five simple types of light sources. Directional light, which is used for the sun. Point light works in all directions and can be used to light up dark corners or as a light bulb in a lamp. Spotlight works in the form of a cone and is used for spotlights and point light sources. Rectangular light is used for lighting coming out of windows and backlighting. Skylight is used for fill light. And there are two types which consist of simple light sources and additional objects. These include HDRI backdrop, the lighting from HDRI and the backlighting behind a window, and sun and sky, similar to daylight system in 3D Max, defines the position of the sun according to geolocation and time of day. Before beginning to practice, we need to install a plugin which will bake the lighting of GPU. Find the thread dedicated to the plugin on the official Unreal Engine forum. Go down and find the latest version of the plugin that will work with your version of the engine. Download and unzip it. Put the folder engine of the plugin in the directory of Unreal Engine and replace the files. For comparison, we can use the built-in plugin for baking. In project settings, select plugins, tick GPU, light mass. After that, the engine will need a restart. Virtual textures need to be turned on for the plugin to work correctly. This way the render can be seen in real time. Go to Setting, Project Settings, select Rendering and activate the Enable Virtual Texture Support option. Make sure that the two options below are also activated. Next, the engine will need a restart. Press Build Lighting. The baking process will be seen in real time, but at the same time real time strains the GPU, which can be seen with slow mode written in brackets. And in order to turn it off, Go to triple bar icon in the upper left corner and untick real time, or use the hotkey combination Ctrl plus R. The slow mode notification disappears and the baking process is now way faster. Notice how poor quality lighting can be seen on the surfaces of the walls in the form of waves. This effect can be seen more clearly in lighting only mode. It's because the compress light maps option is ticked. Let's disable it and bake the lights again. The waviness of light maps is gone from all the surfaces and these dark surfaces are not connected with compression. I increased the baking settings a little bit without filming it, but it didn't lead to any visible results in this project. There are a lot of artifacts and the shadows are more blurry than when baking using the plugin by Lua Schwang. Next, I'll compare the lighting of the two plugins so you can see the difference in shadows and speed of the process. I will open the output log, it is similar to the history panel in Photoshop. It took 4 minutes 21 seconds to bake the lighting. In my opinion, global illumination results in saturated filling lighting, which leads to more yellow in this scene than needed. Now let's compare the results with the plugin by Lua Schwang. I like its results more, and it works faster. Epic Games continue to develop and improve the built in plugin, and actually, it can work pretty well. Nonetheless, I will use a third-party plugin for this scene. Let's take another look at the comparison. Before practice, I would like to talk about bookmarks. These are ways to save particular shots. For example, I like this shot. I press Ctrl plus 1 and by doing so, I save this shot. By pressing 1, I go to this shot. Now, I look for a new shot to save it. For example, this one. By pressing Ctrl plus 2, I save this shot. Now the shot will be assigned to key 2. I press 2 and go to this shot. This way, I made a couple of bookmarks. By pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and etc., Unreal Engine shows the save shot, so to speak. Ok, we're done with that boring theory. Let's move on to practice. Outliner, which is similar to Layers Manager in 3D Max, 
I choose Skylight. It is used to create fill light. You can also create Skylight in the panel in the upper part of the interface, Layers, by moving the Skylight. Right now, I will remove the second Skylight, choose the first one, and we will see what kind of functions there are. Now the function specified cube map is enabled. It means that we can upload HDRI. Right now, there is completely homogeneous fill light. I untick the Effect World option. This way, I turn off the fill light and bake the scene how it is, without any light sources in it. There are no active light sources in the project, that's why the scene is so dark. I choose Skylight in the Outliner, which I remind you gives fill light, and activate it by ticking the Effect Word option Build Lighting Only. I bake the lighting again. The fill light is back, and in order to see only the lighting, I will go to the Lighting Only mode. Also, all the objects will have only simple light material. By pressing G on the keyboard, we can hide the net, additional instruments and controllers. On a popular website with HDRI, I will find sky with the sun. We can select any. I'm searching for one where the sun is more dispersed. This one will do. I select the HDRI format and the 8 key resolution, not higher than that, and start the download. After moving this content to HDRI browser, I click on it twice and select No MIP Maps in MIPGEN settings. This will allow to preserve maximum quality of this HDRI, so it would lead to maximum level of detail while calculating the lighting. I move the new HDRI to the corresponding cube map slot and bake the lighting again. Additional light and shadow pattern appeared because of the directional lighting of the sun coming from the windows, but also we can now see cold tones of the shadows. In order to get rid of this blue here, I go to HDRI and send saturation to zero. This will discolor it. I press save and build lighting only. This is way better. I got rid of the cold tones of the shadows. Now I will select lit mode in order to see the materials. Right now I need to see reflections in this sphere. Also, I will hide the background behind the window by simply selecting it and pressing H. This is how the shadows in this scene look right now. I will go to the roof, there I have a sphere with the chrome material, in which we can see the reflections of the skylight's HDRI and the reflection of the sun which is the result of the directional lighting. I want to move the sun here. This way, directional light will be also moved. I select skylight and change source cube map angle, rotating the HDRI this way, which is immediately shown on the glassy sphere. Now the sun on the HDRI is in the back. I go back to the short bookmark and start the baking. The sun spot changed its place. I want to move the HDRI one more time in a way that the sun would shine inside the dark room on the second floor. I choose the shot so it is perpendicular to the narrow opening and rotate the HDRI until the reflection of the sun is right in front of me. I go back to the shot bookmark and bake the lighting. Now there is a bit more lighting in this room. I go out once more, so I can see the sphere, choose skylight and rotate it so the sun rays go inside through the narrow windows. Now we can bake the lighting. Select build, build lighting only, and now the sun rays are more defined because the sun goes through the openings. The next thing I will do is delete the openings. There is also a global box that envelopes the whole scene. I will delete it as well. I rebake the lighting one more time. This box blocked the lighting from leaking it. And now, since the box is gone, there is leaking in junctions of geometry objects. It will do for the test for now. I choose skylight again and lower the intensity of the fill light, since right now there is too much of it. There is less intensity now, but still there is too much. I lower the intensity even more, and bake the lighting once again. There is less lighting. This is what I wanted, so there isn't as much light coming in from the window. There is a parameter in Skylight which controls the resolution of HDRI. It's called Cube Map Resolution. And if we look at the reflection in the sphere and see the HDRI through the window, while lowering source cube map angle, we can see how the horizon gets more blurry. And if we want more fill light coming from HDRI, then we'll lower this parameter. If we want more detail in the shadows, then we need to raise cube map resolution. 
Here you can see a couple of examples with high and low HDRI resolution. Also, I recommend raising this parameter with caution. For example, my GPU can work with 4K just fine. Working with a GPU that is not as powerful may result in the app crashing. For example, if I put it to 8K here, even my GPU won't be able to work with this. Here, Unreal is telling me that there isn't enough video memory. The next parameter is indirect lighting intensity. It controls the fill lighting. If we raise this parameter, there will be a lot more light after the baking is done, but also it will result in more overexposure. By the way, if we change indirect lighting intensity in post-processing, then we can also adjust global illumination to be darker or lighter after baking the lighting. If you notice noise in the shadows, then you need to increase the number of samples. To do this, in the engine directory, go to engine, config, open light mask config, and in the very end of the file increase the number of primary and secondary GI samples. Don't forget to save. After the baking the noise is gone, but if there is still some left, you can raise these parameters until the noise is completely gone. Although, while raising these parameters, the render time will also increase. If we change light color in skylight, then the fill lighting gets the tone of the selected color. I will hide the background behind the window so it doesn't get in the way. And such cold fill lighting will nicely do for night lighting. Of course, in practice it should be made less intensive and saturated. I will return the white color which was set by default and bake the lighting once more. Next, if we untick the lower hemisphere solid color option in advanced, then the lower part of the HDRI will let the light to go through. This option is ticked by default, and everything that is lower than the horizon becomes black or different selected color. After the baking, we can see that the lower part of the HDRI started to walk and emit light from the bottom upward. The only thing is that in some places on the ceiling, the lighting is too intensive, same as on the floor. This doesn't look very natural, so we can change light color in lower hemisphere color right here to something in between, gray, for example. I will select lit mode in order to see the reflections and hide the wall and the white background behind the window so I can see the reflection of the HDRI. In skylight, if I tick the lower hemisphere is solid color option again, then we'll see black color after the horizon. If we change it, we can also see change in the sphere's reflection. For example, I'll set it to gray, like this. But the horizon is too sharp, and in order to blur this border, I will lower the cube map resolution and this way making the border more blurry. Let's go to the top and see how it will look. Now the border is blurred and we can make it a bit darker, like this. Ok, Ctrl plus H, this way we return all the hidden geometry. I will go to lighting and bake it once more. And now we see that there is less lighting on the ceiling. I will make it brighter, ok, and bake the lighting once again. This is better. I'll leave it like this. 